Hello everybody, I hope that you're doing very well and welcome to today's cryptocurrency technical analysis where we are going to be going over the Ethereum chart today and looking at the targets that remain to the upside based off of my accumulation schematic. We'll be focusing on the Ethereum Bitcoin pair, but also taking a look at Ethereum to USD. Hope that you thoroughly enjoy this one and let's get into the chart. So to begin, I want to cast your minds back to when we were within this falling wedge. And obviously, while we were within this falling wedge, most people envision that to break to the upside. But myself, I was looking for it to break to the downside to complete the harmonic pattern. Obviously, you can go back and refresh this off of the 26th of October video, where I was highlighting that we were in the accumulation schematic for higher prices on Ethereum. When we were within the falling wedge, we were looking for the breakdown below the daily, between the daily and the weekly to give us your secondary test before we move up for phase B. So we'd already completed our automatic rally. We're looking for the secondary test to complete our harmonic. And what we got was also perfectly, we got the move down out of the falling wedge to kind of trap those people that were longing too early. We got our move down and then we got our move back up and we're in the process of getting our move back up. And I wanna show you a few levels that we bounced off of uh, really nicely. So the first is the Fibonacci speed fan, which we're taking from the low of X up to the high of A. And you can see that we come down to the 0 0.618 speed fan. Just saying that I alerted to, my, to, the, to, the, to the champions group as we were hitting that. that the 0 0.618 speed fan is a really critical in support level. Okay? In an uptrend, it's a critical support level that I like to buy. So this for me was a long opportunity. As it fell under the 0 0.618, we were in the monthly, we were in the CC, and we were obviously around this pattern of the harmonic for point B. Let me expand that so you can see really clearly this is what we had going on at the time. And we can see from that reaction, we have now got a strong move to the upside. And you can see here, if we zoom out, and this is on the daily chart at the moment, you can see the daily that we have here. We are currently bouncing off of it once more. Well, we've currently had that as resistance, resistance back into support back into resistance and now once again coming in as resistance as you can see this was a little bit earlier in the day where i was alerting the champions group that we had hit that daily and well the pullback has been a lot stronger now okay so that was looking about this and now we can see the pullback is coming back and we're back testing the 0 0.5 speed fan so after bouncing off the 0 0.618 we've moved up to the 0.5 through it to the daily pull back to the 0.5 speed fan. So very, very, very technical indeed. So we have to envision, we have to ask ourselves, okay, well then what's next? Well, what we would be saying is, this is obviously our harmonic that we have going on here. We were looking for the move down, move back up to move down. And the way that we're looking at our targets is, I will show you a really nice um, tactic that you can use. So basically what I'm gonna be doing here is pulling this fixed range tool. And looking at the whole of the range that we currently have, and that really starts all the way back from, um, I'm going to move this to 148 ticks, and we're going to move, put this on number of rows. And you can see from all the way back uh, in the 18th of September, where the accumulation schematic really started, what we have is we've come up into the point of control. So this is the level where the most volume has been transacted. So this is a resistance. So we've come up into that point of control and we've also come up into the daily. So naturally, you don't really expect it to break through first time. Being such a strong resistance level, it's unlikely that price would just do this. Uh, go straight through, straight through, straight. You know, price doesn't really do that. What it has is these pullbacks off of big resistances. So you hit your big resistance and you pull back. Generally speaking, you'd be looking at an area of support such as a 382 Fibonacci level, a 0.5 Fibonacci to a 0.618 Fibonacci level. Those are generally acceptable pullbacks in an uptrend that you would be looking to potentially buy. Um, you know, for me, this is a take profit region. It doesn't mean switch short because the trend is still up. But these are places for, for myself personally where I'd look to take profits and then look to compound on a pullback. And you're getting the pullback at the moment. As you can see, the target for the C, and this is not to time scale, by the way. This is not to time scale. We're not, we're not, I'm not saying it's going to take all the way to where April and come back down in, in September next year. So this, this is not to time scale. But what we can say is the levels horizontally. Uh, we're looking for about this uh, 0 0.35 on the Bitcoin pair, which would be another uh, about 13% 
and on the USD pair. Uh, this can be done in another video, but I've got this Elliott Wave count, and I'm looking for around 700 to, to really the monthly there, which sits at $669. So that this region, uh, that's another increase of about 12% as well. So we could see anywhere really between the monthly, which for me is a key level, $669 to that upper weekly, which is $784. Those are two key levels on the USD pair. Those are the key levels above us on the Bitcoin pair. So both, I would say, are looking for higher levels as it stands right now. Yes, we're getting pullbacks, but that is to be expected. You don't go through these resistances like butter. You get the pullbacks, you then look, you know, you take profit at the resistance, you compound as you get the drop. That's how I like to trade. Uh, obviously, one thing to bear in mind is the Bitcoin pair does pull back when Bitcoin's going up. So if we add on Bitcoin here, really simply what you can see is BT, BTC against USD. And we will add on this and we'll go down onto a lower term time frame. You can see the inverse correlation as Bitcoin started to move up. That's in orange. Bitcoin starts to move up and the BTC pair against Ethereum moves down. So there's an inverse correlation on the lower term time frames when Bitcoin is very volatile. So that's something that I want you to bear in mind as well. Um, but that really is the analysis that I have for you today. It was an update on the accumulation pattern, which was very well predicted by myself with the move down before that move back up. And it really started the whole of the altcoin run. The altcoins move off of Ethereum and Ethereum came to support, started its bounce, and it really assisted all the other alts. You know, you take a look at EOS, XRP, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They're they're all up a lot, you know, in terms of percentage. You know, XRP made a over 150%. So the, the alts were assisted by Ethereum. Um, so that's something to bear in mind as well. But that is my analysis of today. I've gone through some really important resistances above us in terms of targets. Uh, supports below us that you would look at in terms of Fibonacci. Okay, and why Ethereum pulls back when Bitcoin's running up. Basically, there's an inverse correlation. When, when Bitcoin is extremely volatile, Ethereum is, is generally going to be pulling back. So that's just something to bear in mind as well. Uh, as, as Bitcoin is moving up as we speak. So I hope that you thoroughly enjoyed today's analysis. I've given you some insights into how I come about that prediction, which was, which was, which was really nicely offered at 0 0.618, combining with the weekly there uh, to give us our harmonic pattern. How then we foresaw the drop back into the rise, then the levels of resistance that we're up against now, and overall how we're still expecting a little bit more upside to come on Ethereum, giving you then the targets on the USD pair as well. Uh, so I hope that you've thoroughly enjoyed this one. If you have, I would always appreciate a like down below. And if you haven't already, then you should subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any more updates like I gave the last one on Ethereum because that was a brilliant call indeed. I uh, hope that you have a brilliant week ahead, everybody. Thank you ever so much. And I'll catch you in the next analysis. Cheers and goodbye.